Today's lesson, the premise is if we learn how compounding interest grows faster. I hope you remember that from yesterday. Compounding interest grows faster. Well, how much can we push that equation so that we can grow even faster? So in other words, we know that my formula will be here, right? And this is the percent rate per year. And this is how many years? I'd like everyone to take a look at that equation or that formula and tell me if there's any questions from yesterday. Is everyone okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Well, what if I didn't want to calculate per year? What if I wanted to calculate, for example, if I wanted to take this percent per year and I wanted to calculate per month, What's the logical thing to do? How about I do this as a visual? Let's pretend this line represents one month. So that is from here to here, it's January. From here to here, it's February. From here to here, it's March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and unbalanced December. Okay? And for that entire piece, Okay. That is, let's pretend the bank is going to, going to give me 12% for the entire year. 12 months, 12%. If suddenly the conditions change and I want to calculate every month, is it fair that I ask them to calculate 12% every month as well? Or would you want to pay 12% interest every month as well? Any people to really keep up? Does that make sense logically? If you are in debt, you owe someone $100 and they're saying, oh, you have to pay me back 12% a year. But you're like, oh, can I just pay it back every month? They're like, oh, okay, you can pay back 12% every month. Is that equal? That's a lot of money, right? So what's the logical thing to do if I want to break it down into 12 months? Right, 1%, 1%, 1%. Well, it's a 12 divided by 12, right? 12 divided into 12 different groups. What's interesting though, is when you do that, you are pushing the idea of compounding interest even further. Do you remember how we multiply our interest onto whatever we had in the previous year. And so the amount of money we grow, uh, we gain grew even more. Well, that's going to happen here as well. Consider this. Let's all go to our sheets for today. For today's lesson, the rest of the chapter, all of chapter eight, We'll focus on compounding interest and not simple. So be mindful of this equation. Also, the textbook might use the letters FB for future value instead of the, number, the letter A. So if you are by chance using the textbook and we are using textbook questions in the back as well, don't be fooled by the words FB for future value. Okay? All right. Here is the scenario. A thousand dollar bond, so a thousand a thousand dollar investment has it return 12% per annum. However, you who made that investment, you're too impatient to wait. You want your money now. So since there are 12 months in a year, is it fair to ask the bank to give you 1% a month? The bank will say no. Why? Well, let's invest it, right? Let's pretend you put in, not $100, sorry, let's put in $1,000 into a bond. Your interest rate is 0 0.12. And N is new, okay? That's how many times do you want to calculate a year? 
In this case, it's just one. <coughs> And so don't uh, get confused. I'm going to do something funny here. There's a new letter I, which I'll show you later. I'm going to take my R and divide it by how many times I want to do it a year. So this is 0 0.12 divided by one. Okay. You know what? In fact, if you haven't written it yet, don't worry about that. Okay. And of course, this is Don't worry about that for now. Once a year. All right, let's put this together. If I do my normal compounding interest question uh, formula, I'm putting one, yes, my exponent, because I'm just doing it once a year. So, how much did I earn after one year? Someone's gonna have to work the calculator for me. How much did I earn in one year? Well, rather, sorry. How much did I grow to after one year? What's my final amount? Final value. Okay. One. Okay, everyone, a couple of things I'm going to write. Interest calculated once, right? So in other words, annually. So, I'm just going to put that there just to remind you. The interest was calculated one time, and the percentage that we used was 12%. However, now I'm going to change the scenario on you. What if you compounded the interest monthly, just like this person right here? You are in two patients to wait, and you ask to compound it 1% every month. So. My principal is going to be $1,000, please add another zero. My rate is still 12%, but uh, M, how many times am I compounding a year? Not rocket science? Well, so what is the actual interest rate I am going to use when I calculate? How do you calculate that? Right now it's easy, but just in case I give you harder numbers, please write this formula down. The interest rate you will use is the rate per year divided by how many times you do it a year. In this case, what is it? It is 12%, so 0 0.12 divided by 12. I am using 1% every calculation. Put little disclaimers on these arrows that I'm drawing. I want to make sure you read this in the future. For example, next week, when I give you that retirement-based assignment, that you will understand exactly what numbers are going in. So please compare the formula on the left side with the right side. Okay. 
here, it's very straightforward. The percentage is in years and how many years you're doing it. If I change the interest rate into months, then I have to put the time in months. I think that makes sense. Can someone do this for me? Someone with a calculator? This becomes 1,000 times 1.01 to the power of 12. One hundred twenty-six and eighty-three cents. It's not a big difference, but remember, everyone, this is only one year. What happened? Can you explain? Where did the extra six dollars and eighty-three cents come from? It's just like yesterday. The amount of interest we made in January, right? Made interest for you in February. The amount of interest that you earned in February made interest for you in March, while the interest that you made in January made interest in February is also making interest in March. It's compounding interest. It's this idea right here. Read this carefully. Why is the sum different? Because in every month, the interest made in the previous month made interest. So think about it this way. The 1% you earned in January, that's your money now, right? So it made 11% for you for the remainder of the year. Next, the 1% that you earned in February there's still 10 months to go. So it earned 10% for the remaining of the year. The amount that you made in March, there's still nine months to go. So it made 9% for you for the rest of the year. So the little bits of money that you have made along the way is making money for you. And so from here, I have a new formula. And this is important. Cameron, if there's anything that you're gonna pick up today, Brendan, up here, I am changing our formula. Do you notice that the rate R is now divided by N? Do you notice that the time T is now multiplied by N? That N is the introduction of, of true compounding period. And what is the N value? It's how many times you're going to calculate a year. A quiz, let's see if you know some English. Annually means one time a year. Semi-annually, think the word like semi-circle, right? Like, you know, when you cut out a, like a, like a orange slice or you can cut a slice of watermelon, you know what that semi-circle means, right? Quarterly, how many times are you calculating if it's quarterly? Okay. Four. Want to continue, Cameron? Monthly? Semi okay, semi monthly is 24, twice a month. So 24. And what's bi weekly? Um, 100 and no, no, no. Bi weekly means every two weeks. Correct. You're, you're going the opposite direction. Oh. That would be two years. Oh. If I'm counting every two weeks, so two weeks, two weeks, two. Oh. you're dividing by a two, 52 yeah. divided by two would be 26. Weekly then, oh. 52. And yes, this exists, right. 365. When would the bank ever calculate interest daily? It's called a line of credit. You might have heard that before. You, a line of credit is basically you can borrow money at any time, no questions asked, 
here's $50,000 sitting in a pot. If you borrow it, that's fine, just pay it back. But for every day you borrow, you're gonna charge interest. Okay. Typically, mortgages, they will give you the option of annually, semi-annually, monthly, semi uh, monthly, yeah, semi-monthly, and even bi-weekly. Right? Banks don't want you to pay back right away. So they're like, oh, just pay back once a year. And the interest is like, boom. But if you pay back a little bit at a time, it actually works wonders. Anyways, so these are the numbers we're going to use. Let's see it in action for the first couple of examples, just so you know how your formula is now changing. Instead of R, it is now your R per year divided by how many times you're gonna calculate it. And instead of the number of years, you're gonna multiply it by N so that it turns into whatever uh, period you are talking about, ready? All right, Mr. What invests 1,500 into an account earning 3.3 annual interest compounded monthly. There it is. This is what is new for every word question you get. They will tell you how often it's compounded. Right away, what's my N value if it's compounded monthly? But I invested this much, so that's my principal. This is how much I get per year. So my R is 0 0.033. What will her investment be? Oh, I didn't mishear her. Uh, maybe it's like a fluid thing. Her investment be worth in five years. T equals five. Plug it in. A equals 1,500. Bracket one plus 0 0.033 divided by 12 over 12 times five. I'll put that in the practice too. So everyone at this point, I hope you will take out your calculator because seeing as how the brackets are now more complicated, I need to make sure you can do all of this in one go and not get confused. If you don't want to do it in one go, do as I do. Do this first, 12 times five, it's gonna be 60, just write it off. And see if we can calculate this. And if you can do that, then you can do all of it in one row. Otherwise, I highly recommend you get so familiar with your calculator that you can actually punch all that in without error. I don't know. What if you're getting the same answer? I will wait for everyone to try and make some mistakes on their calculator. Pick out a calculator you would probably use for a test and see if you can, you can get there. So you're welcome to, to you know, if you're, it's under shadow, it's the rooms are here, okay. Any problems with that value? I am going to make some room for the second example. And we'll just do the other two very quickly. Any questions, any problems with that value? Is everyone okay with their calculator? All right. Next. 
So I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. This is exactly what does happen. Um, if you're not spending the money right away, put it somewhere where it can compound. Even the most uneducated of financial people can appreciate, just put it somewhere that gives you something back, like an investment or even a savings account, and you will see your money grow as long as you don't touch it. Miss Who needs 10,000 needs, that's future needs, to go on our dream vacation in three years. So I'm gonna write this down. My time is three years. How much do I need at the final of it? It is going to be 10,000. The question says so, it's not P. How much does she need to invest now? In other words, what's my principal now? If I earn 4.5%, which is 0 0.045. And the interest is compounding what? It's semi annual. How many times is that a year? You know. So, as long as you can identify these, let's plug it into the equation. Remember that A is equal to P1 plus R over N all to the power of NT. This 10,000 equals P, 1 plus R over N, all to the power of N times T. Let's see if we can uh, do this without making any mistakes. How about that? Since you get the same decimal, because if you do, well, the rest is very easy. Yeah, I'll stop right there and see if anyone has uh, any questions about how I got that number. Because from there, it's very easy to isolate P. You don't have to get the final answer, but I'd like you to see if you can get that 1.12. Any problems with that one number? Who here is not getting that one? And we'll take it slow together. Everyone's okay? All right. Then if P is isolated, your final value would be 8,879.71 cents. But I'd like you to think about what this means. I highly recommend, even when you get older and you, you, uh, you know, you're making your money and you're thinking about a vacation, I think everyone will need a vacation. It doesn't have to be far. Oh, yes, question. No, the R would be 0 0.04 and you're, sorry, that's an N, and you're divided by two. Oh, good call. I don't know why I just put 0 0.045 there. You're right. So that would be a little bit different, wouldn't it? So if I did that correctly, 0 0.045 divided by 2 to the power of 6. My bad. This is 1.1428254422. Good eye. So that would be 8,750.24. Again, trying to be as realistic as possible, going back to the example of a vacation. 
soon, most likely. I mean, it, it's encouraged to go on vacation. You don't have to go far. You don't have to travel the world. But there is value in seeing the world and seeing how different people live on this earth. Um, but regardless, maybe you're going just for leisure. If you are planning to go on vacation, you don't have to have all the money right away. If you're planning to go next year, if you're planning to go in two years, if you're planning to go in three years, know that you could put that money away and let it grow by itself. The remaining money in this case, how much do you save if you start early? You're saving approximately 1,250. You could put that money somewhere else and treat yourself later on, right? Maybe you can use that money to, you know, um, go on a little excursion or buy lots and lots of yummy food when you go on vacation. I don't know. But there is a way to be smart with your money. You work, you work hard to earn it. Yes. I actually divided both sides by 1.14, getting the p-value all the way. So that's it, everyone. That's today's lesson. It's the idea that if you're compounding for any values other than annually, my rate has to be divided by that same value, and my time has to be multiplied by that same value. Don't sleep on this. Okay, I would like you to try um, before you go home today. Let's see. Uh, please try number three to make sure you understand. Fill in number four. Is there a question? I wish there was a question. Okay, let's do number five. Do these questions before you go. And honestly, if you're getting the hang of it and all your answers match, just keep going until time ends. It's all practice. In the future, you won't, won't hit you for it. Okay? This is compounding, period. Today's lesson is all about that end. Is it one or is it something else? Any questions? All right. That's it for today. That's practice. It's all practice. Um, you know what? Before I actually let you go, I want to talk a little bit about your final assignment that's going to come up next week. Right? This is before culminating. But your final assignment that has to do with finances. How might I try to incorporate this into the concept of your retirement? If you had to guess what kind of question I might ask you on this assignment, where might this idea pop up. How might I use this formula for retirement? Can you see how it might it might connect? No? I'm just gonna wait until it comes. Mm. Here's a very simplified way I might ask you. What if I asked you just like before, you are going to retire at 65. How many years do you have right now? 65 minus 17, about 48 years. Okay. Your investment. Let's pretend you, you invest in the stock market and assume it's a normal, your S&P 500, um, or your, your, yeah, your, you're going to follow the trend of the North North American states, okay? and it's going to give you about 10% a year. But you don't wait 10%. Let's pretend you get your money every month. What is it? Every month. What would my end be if I'm calculating every month? My principal, I don't know, but my final amount, I want this amount to be, how much did we say our, in our original example? Do you remember when I did the little retirement example with you? How much did we say you would need to retire happily? Anyone remember? 
Now give me an imaginary amount. How much do you think you need to feel like filthy rich? Give me your own opinion. Anyone? Yeah. 50, five zero. 50, five zero. Five zero? No, what did you say? 50, one five? Okay. Pretty rich. All right, we'll do it monthly. Let's try it. 15 million is how much right now, if I am calculating 10% a year, but it's monthly and it's 48 years, but you know, multiply by 12, just like before. I'll do that for you because uh, I don't want to waste any more of your time. And if I wait for you to do it, everyone's just going to look around and be like, somebody else do it. It comes to you about. Okay, so that's 15 million. So P is going to be 15 million divided by. Hmm. Oh, yo, oh, people. Ten percent a year, forty-eight years, compounded every month. All you need to do is you don't even need to win the lottery. You need to get the you know you know lotto six forty-nine. You have to get all six numbers. You only have to match five numbers and throw that into investment. You let it sit there for forty-eight years. It's going to become 15 million. Compounding period. When we did it before, if we calculated your interest annually, it didn't grow as much. But if I calculate 10% monthly, look at how big it turned into. I start with this, it grows to 15 million? That's true. And so people like Warren Buffett, it's like, yeah, I started investing when I was like 15 years old or whatever. He's seen it all. And his one advice for everyone is, okay, what, what was a main, what was a famous quote? Be greedy when they're, they're fearful and fearful when they're greedy. So when people are like, oh my gosh, I'm losing my money. I got to sell, sell, sell. That's when Warren Buffett buys stocks. So when everyone's like, oh, no, everything's going to go up in value, buy, buy, buy. That's when Warren Buffett's like, oh, something's wrong. He stops buying stocks and new watches. In the same way, the next advice that he gives is start early. Start with your summer job. If anyone has plans over the summer, if you're going to be like me, take your parents' uh, lawnmower, start mowing your neighborhood, right? $5 a pop, $10 a pop. I'll tell you right now, there were these elementary school kids last year that came. It was a team of like six. One kid had a weed whacker. The other kid had a push mower. The one like the manual ones without electricity. And another one had one of those like shears, right? So one kid was like, you want us to do your lawn for you, right? Your lawn looks really messy. And I'm like, so embarrassed. Like, yes, my lawn is a little bit messy. We can do it for you for whatever amount you want. And you know, that appeals to your heart, right? So I'm like, oh, all right, these kids are working out. I'll give you 20 bucks really, really quickly. So three kids, one kid does all the mowing because my lawn's not big. The other kid goes around, snips the, snips the, uh, the, the stuff that can't be done by a lawnmower. And the other kid does the weed whacker against the stones, right? They did it in like 30 minutes and they earned 20, $20 together. And they go lawn by lawn by lawn. And they chose our, our street well because we have a lot of elderly people in our lawn, right? That's a business mindset. If they can get two, three customers an hour, at $60 an hour, for them, 10-year-olds, $20 an hour is a big deal. And they have the energy for it because they're young and, and, and energetic. Take whatever amount that you have, consider not spending it right away. The less you spend now, the more it turns into as long as you invest it. That's my little spiel. I'm done talking. 
Uh, I would like you to try some of the homework questions as practice. Think of this as practice for your assignment. Okay.